This lesson deals with an inductor. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 11. Our previous elements of a resistance and a capacitance had the actual device as a resistor and a capacitor. The same will be true for inductance. The actual device will be called an inductor. The OR ending indicates it's the physical device. The ANCE ending indicates the idealized concept. An inductor consists of many turns of wire, usually wrapped around an iron core, indicated as in this drawing. The inductance increases as the number of turns increases, but it goes as the square. The more windings you have, the more inductance you have, but it will go as the square of the number of windings. What's shown here are some sketches of various types of inductors. This one's called an air core inductor, where the windings of the coil are around a paper tube. This one's called a toroid inductor. It has a piece of iron with wrappings of the wire around this donut shaped. You might find these in a switch mode power supply or a computer power supply. If you look inside a radio, you might see what looks like little cans, but what's inside there is a coil. These are called IF or intermediate frequency radio coils. We can model an actual inductor at low frequencies or DC with the following equivalent circuit. An ideal inductance and an ideal resistance. The resistance represents the resistance of the wires themselves, and the inductance represents the inductive effect that they have. The resistor is called R sub ESR, and it's called the effective series resistance, as measured at very low frequencies or DC. Suppose we have N inductors in series. I'm going to refer to idealized inductance incorrectly as an inductor, but that's what most engineers do. But keep in the back of your mind that ideal inductance has a definition, and an inductor has an equivalent circuit. Suppose I have these N inductors in series. I'll apply a voltage, and I'll have a current flow so that they absorb power. You can replace these N inductors with a single inductor whose value is the sum of the inductance. Why is this true? The current flowing through these elements will cause a voltage drop across each inductance, called this voltage V1 for L1, V2 for L2, all the way through V sub N for L sub N. The rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. That's this equation right here. From our definition of an inductance, the voltage across an inductance is L di dt. So that can be L1 di dt, but the current in L1 is the same as L2 and so on. So that's the same derivative, but then times the individual inductance. Pull that out as a summation of terms times the derivative with respect to t. You can call this sum L equivalent, and therefore you could replace these N inductances with a single inductance whose value is the sum of the inductances, just like series resistors. What about parallel inductances? Suppose I have N inductors in parallel. I can replace that by a single inductor, called L equivalent, whose value is one over the sum of one over the inductances. Why is this true? Well, let's apply a voltage and have a current go into these elements. We'll have this source generating power and these will all be absorbing power. The current I is equal to the current in L1 plus the current in L2 plus the current all the way through L sub N. And I'll call that I1 through I sub N, Kirchhoff's current law. From our definition, the current in an inductance is 1 over L, the integral of V, plus the initial condition. Same is true for inductor 2 all the way through inductor N. The thing that's common here is the voltage across each element is the same because they're in parallel. So I can pull that term out, and I'm left with the sum of 1 over the inductances. I'm also left with the sum of the initial conditions. We call this sum um, L equivalent. 1 over L equivalent would be equal to this summation of 1 over the inductances, which was our definition. And then the initial condition of the total combination is going to be the summation of the individual initial conditions. And this is some of the properties of an inductor.